everyone, welcome to our live stream and thank you for tuning in on Saturday. My name is Joey and I'm part of the community team at Lolly Files. As we have folks joining from across the globe today, do give yourself a shout out on the live chat or drop a comment to say hi and tell us where you're from. For those tuning in for the first time, let me start by giving you a quick intro to who we are and what we do. Lollipops is a platform for testing, collaborating, and discovering animation for a community of designer and developers. The platform offers a range of tools and features that aim to make the discovery, creation, and implementation of body animations easier and more efficient. To give you an even better idea, here's an intro video to what Lollipops is all about. Enjoy! I've got a big fat drum, big fat drum, I've got a big fat drum, pawning so bad, I've got a big fat drum, big fat drum, I've got a big fat, big fat, big, 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 big. Listen! We hope you enjoyed that intro. So for today's session, our Lottie evangelist, Satashi Prakash, will be sharing about how Lottie can elevate the quality of your product, what differentiates a good motion designer from a great one, and there'll be some super cool animation examples during this session. Without further ado, let us welcome our speaker today, Satashi. Hi, Satashi, how is it going? Hey Joe, thanks a lot for the wonderful intro and it feels great to be a part of this live stream and uh, it feels even better to see all these people joining us this live stream on a Saturday morning and uh, I can't be happier. <laughs> I'm really grateful. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, everyone say hi, you know, tell us where you're tuning in from. We're super excited to get to know you. Right, so um, Sashi, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers today? Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. Once again, this is Saptarshi Prakash. I'm a designer. I'm a product designer based out of India. I'm from Bangalore, and uh, I work for this company called Swiggy. If you're from India, you know what it is. So I'm primarily into product design, but motion design is always very close to my heart. I have self-learned it, and I try and use motion design in whatever UX design work that I do. And uh, I love Lottie as a technology, as a platform, and uh, it feels great to be a part of this. So yeah, if you're in Bangalore, let's catch up sometime in person. Hey, that was amazing. Thanks so much. All right, Satashi, so let's not put our audience in any more suspense. And folks, feel free to drop your questions for Satashi on the live chat, and you will get to them at the end of the session. All right, Satashi, the stage is yours. I'll join you back later for the Q&A session. Thank you, Joe. All right, everyone. So I've prepared a few slides for you, but don't worry. It's not a kind of slides where you'll have to sit and take notes. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy this Saturday morning experience. It's going to be a short one, not very long. So don't worry about it. I'm not going to waste your Saturday as well, right? And first of all, yes, I'm Saptarshi Prakash, and uh, I have a very long name even for Indian standards. So please feel free to call me Sapta. S-A-P-T-A, -A. that's what everyone does, that's what friends, that's what colleagues everyone do, so please feel free to call me Sapta. Right, so let's get started right away. Motion design. You all have heard this uh, word or this phrase many, many times before, and just like any other thing in this world, not just motion design, there are always a couple of questions which are associated with it, right? Most commonly, why, how, and the what. Like, why motion design, how motion design, and what motion design. Before we start at the outset itself, I want to make it very clear what today's session is not about, okay? Today's session is not about why motion design. Why not? Because 
It's 2021 and I don't think I need to have a live session to tell you why motion design. I've delivered a talk back in 2016, back in 2016, okay? <laughs> Five years back where I had spoken about why motion design, why motion design is good, how can you perhaps adopt and the drill, you know already. The talk is still out there in YouTube. It was one of my first UX talks that I'd ever delivered. So if you're still curious about why motion design, I suggest you go watch that video then maybe come back later or watch any other videos which are out there on the internet, right? What I'm going to concentrate today's session is on the hows and what's of motion design, okay? Uh, now, why did I choose hows and the what's? The reason because uh, there are relatively fewer content out there in the internet as to how and what. And even if there are, they're largely towards other fields of motion design, right? Because animation is a very large field. There can be different kinds of animation and there's a lot of content about some of the other creative special effects sort of field, but lesser for motion design related to UX or digital experience, which I kind of specialize in. So that's the reason why I thought of speaking about this, right? Now, when you hear motion design, you know, the word which comes to your mind is animation. Of course it is, you know, it is a lot about animation. And what is animation? Animation is about moving things. It's about, if you go and uh, go to the internet and look for the definition, it's about doing something which makes it feel like it's actually moving, whereas it's not. That's what it's about definition, because you know, whatever you see moving, they aren't really moving. They're just a set of pixels or a set of, you know, layers moving here and there, right? So that's what animation is. Now, when you say animation, it can range from a whole lot of things from whole whole lot of things and these are tools using which you can create right the most common tool which many of you might have heard about of course is after effects that's used to do 2d animations the, the tool that probably people like you and i if you are into digital experience design be using there are also many other kinds of tools like blender maya or cinema 4d which are used for much larger purposes and they can be used to achieve much much larger things maybe stuff like this as well you know your favorite uh, your favorite movies your favorite animated movies are also created by animators there are specialists there are creators who animate and make movies like this now people who create these kind of animations that you know someone who created say the tarzans or the kung fu pandas or the avatars of the world they are really good at what they do they're really good at the skill of animation itself they have the skill to make it realistic or to give it any feel that they want to they are experts in animation right so if i were to see their skill you know, if i were to compare their skill and scale it up in a scale of say 0 to 10 they would be somewhere close to there close to nine and a half and ten because that's the only thing that they are applying and using they have to be good at it and that's the reason they call themselves animators and uh, their skill of animation is what is uh, is the reason why they're hired for why they do what they do but in our case that is for digital experiences things are slightly different you know from a skill level of animation, you don't really need to be at nine or nine and a half level. In fact, around this much, maybe around two, three is also fine because we don't do all that complicated kind of animation, do we? Maybe we just move, shake and uh, rotate, spin and use some very simple criteria or simple techniques out there to, to achieve what we wish to. So we don't really need to know that much of animation which the other kind of animators need to know. Right? That's at our advantage. And it's very easy to learn this kind of animation. Why? Because there are tons of resources in the internet. You know, you go and search for After Effects, for UX or, you know, motion design. You will come across many, many, many tutorials. Of course, I myself have created many of those tutorials for my YouTube channel. But beyond that as well, there are many, many tutorials. And you watch a couple of them and you already know how much you need to know. So what I'm saying is it's very easy to master this much of animation that we need to know, which is good, which is great, which means anyone, even if you have never used After Effects or if you, even if you have never done any kind of motion design, you can actually get into it and you can acquire that required skill of animation by watching a few YouTube videos and then of course practicing and getting better over time. That's true for any skill, right? But in a very short time, it is possible to learn it. You don't really need to have years and years of practice to achieve there. In a short time, you can achieve it. That's a good thing. Now, the thing about any skill is you need to keep getting better. 
If I say that, yeah, it is very easy to achieve. Maybe you learn it in a few months, six months or so. After that, what do you do? But do you get better? Of course, you need to, right? Because you need to progress in your career, in your life. Then what do you do? So there's a cycle, you know, which comes here. It's like, you know that you need to get better. But then when you look into the skills, you realize that, but I already know what I need to. So what do I need to learn? Maybe nothing. So you again go back in that circle. You again realize a few days later that I need to get better. But then when you start seeing, you feel like, but I already know that I need to. So there is this, you know, vicious cycle that many motion designers get into where they feel they need to get better, but they also feel that they know everything because you need to know very little to start with at the first place, right? This is exactly where the what comes into the picture. Yeah? So the what that I had spoken about before. Now, what is this what of motion design? It is the thing that you animate. How you animate is about learning those skills. How you animate is about learning how to move, how to smoothen it, how to make it lifelike and all, which you already know is an easier task or a relatively easier task. What will make you better as a motion designer is the what of it. Okay, let's see that a little bit in detail, right? This is actually the thing that differentiates a great motion designer from a good one. Yeah, let's have a look. It can be about understanding the things around you. You're as simple as that. I give this ball example everywhere. You know, you see this ball. Uh, what kind of ball is it? It's, it's, it's a tennis ball maybe, right? And if I ask you if this is dropped, how will it bounce or how will it, how will it path look like? It's simple, you know, I can take a pencil and draw it. Maybe it's going to fall and then bounce and go and fall once again, and so on. Now, if I change this tennis ball to maybe a golf ball, which is much denser and doesn't bounce as much as a tennis ball, maybe you will say that it won't bounce as much as that and maybe the trajectory will be something like this, what you see in front of the screen right now, right? Now, this is come from your understanding of the world around you. You know how a tennis ball is, you know how a golf ball is, you know how a stone is, you know how a cotton ball is, you know how a plastic ball is, rubber ball is, and so on and so forth. And based on that, you know, or you can guess how the path of it would be if the floor at the bottom is a concrete or a hard one. Of course, that's also important, right? Now, this is about knowing the world which is around you, the reality. But when we animate, we do not always animate reality. There's a story behind it. There is a composition behind it, which determines if your animation is good, okay, or is it great or extraordinary. It's not always, you know, how well you have moved the thing, but it is about what story are you narrating using that, right? Let me show you another example. What you see in front of you right now, it's nothing but a storyboard. A storyboard is nothing but a plan. Right? You plan for anything, right? You want to go for a road trip, you would plan, okay, these are the things that I need to pick, these are the things I need to buy and so on. This is the storyboard, the plan that motion designers create before they animate anything, right? So you probably get asked this question, right? How do you think about all this thing? How did you come up with this idea? You come up with this idea because you dabble around and you think about it so damn much before actually getting in the tool and animating it in real life, right? This is one of the processes. Now look at this, what is happening out here? By the way, I didn't make this storyboard. I found it online. I just thought of using it as an example to drive my point, what I'm trying to say here today. It's a cloud which is floating on the sky and uh, it turns and suddenly sees another cloud with a very nice cake on top of it with candles that are burning. So this cloud, our cloud number one, rushes towards the other cloud, yeah, blows the candles, and eats the cake, opens its mouth, culls the entire cake inside, chews and <laughs> completely eats it. Now this is a very small, funny animation. Maybe it will barely last for two to three seconds if I'm not mistaken, or maybe five seconds maximum, that's about it. But you see what kind of planning has gone into it? Is this reality? Not really. Yep, your understanding of balls and materials and all are important, but look at this, nothing is real out here. Clouds don't have eyes and mouths, Clouds don't eat cake and you won't find a cake on a cloud. But all these things are imagined and presented in a way so that it feels good. It's a story out here, right? So what essentially has happened in this storyboard is a story. You know, a story comes out of it. The communication that is going to happen or that is going to, uh, yeah, to the viewers who are going to watch this animation. And only after all this planning, you would go and maybe go and create and animate it. 
Now, if you even look into it, not much is happening. The cloud is just moving, maybe left to right motion, and then it turns. So the eyes and the mouth kind of move more than the body. Then a cake appears, and then, you know, the cake kind of, you know, a big circle appears, which is black in color, and then the cake goes inside and all. So the animation is relatively simpler. What is tough, however, is to come up with this story, right? It needs years of thinking. It needs uh, it needs clarity of thought. It needs vivid imagination for someone to come up with a story like this. And that's what differentiates a good motion design or a great one from a good one. Because a good motion designer might just be able to execute it. But where does the idea come from, right? And this, my friend, no tutorial can ever teach you. People can show examples. You know, I can show you this example of cloud and say that, look, this is how someone has done it. But that's just one way. That's not a formula which you can apply and then keep doing wonderful, or great animations or motion design stuff ever. No, right? So it needs to come from within. And how does it come? Because you need to think in motion. Okay? Let me explain a bit what, you, what I mean by thinking in motion. When you see anything around you, anything in your life, you know, I have my phone in front of me right now. If you see this phone and look at it, it's a concrete substance. It's a concrete object. How will this move? Can you imagine that? Can you think without even looking at it in your mind how this phone can perhaps move in reality and also in a slightly exaggerated world? That's what I mean by thinking in motion. Right. So in a real world, maybe this phone will can rotate like this, can spin like this or can move from left to right and so on and so forth, which we all know because we all handle a, we all carry a mobile phone every day in our lives. How will it move in an exaggerated world? That's where your imagination and creativity comes into the picture. Right. Maybe it can even bend and yet not break. Maybe it can get deformed and then come back to its shape after whatever the event has happened. All those things doesn't happen in real life, but with the creative liberty and imagination, you can ima imagine and perhaps animate some of these things. Yeah. Let's do something really quick, right? I'm pretty sure you all know who this person is. <laughs> you know, if you do not know, it's nothing but, you know, it's a guard uh, from one of the popular Netflix series, which became popular recently. It's called Squid Game. So these, this is one of the guards from the uh, series Squid Game, right? Now, if I ask you this question, how can this guard move? What are the possible ways this guard can move? Okay, that's a stupid question because this guard is a human, right? It's a guard is a human which has worn uh, a jacket, it's worn a uniform. That's about it, but it's a human, right? So if it's a human, it can move just like any other human, just like what you and I can. Maybe it can move its head, it can move its arm, elbows, wrists, fingers, everything, right? That's how this guard can move. That's why I say it's a stupid question. So whatever you can, uh, whatever the way you can move your body, this guard can also move its body that way. Let us bring a layer of abstraction here. Just a layer of abstraction, you know. I can represent this guard in a highly, highly abstracted, maybe slightly exaggerated way as well, right? Maybe this is a doll version or a cartoon version or a bobblehead version of that same uh, guard that you saw. Right? It has a head which is much bigger because it's an exaggerated form, right? And uh, it's very different from that actual card, but yet it represents the same card. Now, you know, let's maybe look at the comments, comment section and see if I were to ask you this question, how would this guard move compared? How would this guard move differently compared to the actual guard that I have shown before? Okay, let's see something in the comment section that people come up with. I know that there's a live session, so there might be a bit of a lag. So I'll wait for a few seconds to see if any comments drop in. Are people actually following the talk or are they just playing it and then doing their own stuff behind? I'll get to know now. I'm looking at the chat, folks. Just drop in wherever you're watching it from, be it YouTube or LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. Thunder says uh, it will be flimsier than a human body. Um, Syed says it's sideways. Kritika says bouncy. Uh, <laughs> head. Tapan says head slow moves. I think a lot of people are also coming from my Instagram. 
so you know they already have some context about what i had done with this but regardless i'll just see vinit says uh, moonwalk george says hello from georgia hello george shweta says bounce export the design into after effect and that convert into lotty mohan says okay mohan you're way ahead <laughs> you are that front bencher i guess bounce and squish like a rubber ball kruti says raise hand and shoot <laughs> shweta says cart wheels awesome melt with every step wow that's interesting that's interesting pujil bhat melts with every step i like that <laughs> dance moves head moving 360 more than a human can akshay wow that that's wonderful yeah you know head moving reminds me of the horror movies that i used to watch in the 90s <laughs> but interesting interesting follow stick animation pattern is what kartik says shweta says like waves like waves huh okay okay robotic walk says vignesh uh raven says hop santosh says dancing moves uh sumit says it's a cake so sumit do you feel like eating it <laughs> it's a cake right just like the cloud kind of couldn't resist seeing the cake around okay all right all right you know i i think there are some wonderful comments i really like some of them uh, that you had said you know i like i like the moonwalk part i like the moving 360 melts with every step i think these are really interesting but what you essentially did out here is you know that this is an abstract form of the same card it's not real card so this probably cannot do everything that the guard can but maybe it can do a few other things which the guard cannot right so it's not just a reduction of capability there is an intersection the common things which the guard and this doll can move but then each of them have their own capabilities as well and some of the things that you had said right now look at this look at the shape of his yeah i think it's a male because i have seen the series right look at the thickness of his hands palms and legs they're much thicker right do you see any probable joints out there I don't quite see, you know. My hand has a joint, so my elbow. I see this hinge joint that I have here. I don't really see out there in that, right? So it's holding the gun like this, but I don't think this character can move its hands up to this ex extent what you and I can, right? And uh, look at the head; it's much heavier, right? So the head is almost as big as the rest of the body, and uh, all the joints. I don't see any joints in the body. So what it makes me feel is that this is like a rubber doll, you know. So if I take this doll and move its leg, pull its leg and release, it's going to recoil in a spring manner because it makes me feel it's rubberish, right? And uh, same with the head, hands, and the entire body. So it can do a few things, but it cannot. How do we know all this? Because we are imagining. We are thinking in motion. You know, you are imagining. Okay, this guy is doing a cartwheel, and if it does a cartwheel, how will the hand work? Because the hand is probably smaller than the head. So, moment it tries to do a, a cartwheel, maybe the head is going to hit the bottom. So, how is it going to work? Maybe it will bend its head a bit to have a successful cartwheel. This is what I mean: thinking in motion, right? Take hypothetical case and keep imagining in your head: How can this move? How can that move? Right? But then there are certain rules that you accept, and rest of the things you know you'll have to live with. For example, this has a big head. That's it. It has a big head. But if it moves, it's going to touch the ground. That's a reality. Don't get away with that. So set some rules and keep them. Make them consistent. Stick to them. Do not invent new rules when you are in the process of creating your storyboard. right do not say that okay no no when it is doing cartwheel the head is going to magically reduce in size no that's okay i understand but then you are defining a new rule at a later stage because you arrived at some problem right so a good motion designer or rather a great motion designer will define some of the possibilities and non possibilities and after that they will stick to it like think about it this is what happens in any movies as well any fantasy movie right or maybe a a horror movie right in horror movies they show ghosts they show ghosts right and ghosts have certain powers and beyond that they cannot do they are not some all powerful uh, you know organisms or something so that's how the directors or the story writers were right these are the things which the ghost can do the beyond that they cannot do right they are not some super human who can do everything there are super human who can do a little more than human but that's about it right so that's what i mean by defining a rule So when you build a structure like this with your imagination and abstract form, define some of these rules, 
and stick to them throughout, right? That will give you a, a, a good story. That will give you a good story. And you think of a composition where it is moving and uh, it will look good. It will make it look great. In fact, I had tried it as well. So if you follow me on Instagram, many of you had already probably seen it, right? So this is what how I had animated it, okay? So there were different kinds of guards in the show Squid Game. So uh, each guard, each type of guard would be represented with one shape. So I thought, what if it moves his head? And the way he does, the shape changes and uh, its power also changes. So square, circle, triangle or something, right? And when it is moving, just look at the things. How would the rest of the body, body moving, right? It is just bending a bit. Of course, now I haven't done a lot of abstract thing out here, but uh, the head is so big that when some half of your body is moving, it's going to have impact on the rest of your body because it's so big in proportion. And that's why, you know, see the rest of the body is also moving a lot. In reality, if you try and move your head like this, your body will move, but not as much. Now here, the exaggeration is happening because the head is big. You get it, right? So yeah, and if you ask me how I got that idea of moving it this way, I got it from this thing. <laughs> this is nothing but, you know, when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure all of you have had it as well. We would have this tiffin boxes and lunch boxes where you would have this small puzzle game, right? It's nothing this form of labyrinth, the, the popular game out there. So you have some metal balls and then you'll have to, you know, play the maze and make sure that all the balls are at the center, right? So I would try and do that as well as a kid. And I would maybe successfully manage to have one ball inside the hole. But then when I try and move the second hole, the second ball, the first ball would move out. So it gets very very annoying and irritating. So what I would do is I would just shake the box and just get frustrated. And when you shake the ball box, the balls inside it would also move and shake. And at times some of their positions would change. That's where I got the idea from, right? Maybe when I used to shake the box, something used to happen inside because of the shake. So is it not possible here when a structure like this move its head, can the shape change? Or can, you know, it, it, it bring out something else. In fact, what I was trying was when the shape changes, maybe the capabilities will also change. Maybe the gun will change from a small to big, you know, based on whether it's a triangle, circle or square. But it was taking a lot of time and it was Diwali time during which I was making it. Well, you know, I would rather spend some time with the family and then I had pushed it, right? So, but the idea came from this thing, this, this cute little toy <laughs> that you see. That's where the idea had come from, right? Now, if you want to know uh, what was the how behind it, like I've spoken about the what, the how is also simpler, right? You just break down after illustrating this entire piece in Figma, I made it in Figma and uh, you know, you break down every piece. This is exactly what I had done. You know, the gun and the shadow were two different layers. The hand holding the gun was again different. The wrist was different. So where the, you know, this buckles, the head, the symbols, the legs, all of these were different, you know, and these were like different images that I had imported inside After Effects and then I slightly move them. Animation is no big deal. The, you know, it's just rotation, just a bit of shake, just a bit of move. That's about it. You see how simple the hub is, especially when I break it down like this, right? So yeah, folks, you know, if you learn to think in motion, you can potentially be a great motion designer because do not expect that by knowing two out of 10 of animation, you will be a great motion designer someday. No you will have to complement this two out of 10 motion design or animating skills with maybe seven or eight out of 10 of imagination for you to become an overall great motion designer. Okay, I hope that makes it clear. So thinking is as important as your ability to craft. And of course, over time, you know, your animating skills as well as your imagination skills will uh, will be improved because as and when you do it more, you will get better ideas and you will get better at animating, smoothening or making it real life, whatever, right? You will keep getting better at it. But combination of these two things are extremely important. The work of a motion designer is not just to create the animation, because remember, why not? Because you're not as great an animator. You cannot make a Kung Fu Panda kind of movie. If you can, sure, you know, maybe you are in that league. But for most of us, we don't need that kind of animation skills. This much is fine, but complement with the rest of the things. Okay. You know what? What is another thing that's going to make you a great motion designer? It's by making your animation known. People should know that, you know, you have animated it. And one way, of course, is to show it off on social media like what I did. <laughs> and another way, in fact, the better way is to implement them in whatever you're working. 
implement them in the app or the website, whatever you're building or whatever, the company that you're working on, because that ensures that your animation is going to all the users who are using it. And they're seeing it in the context of why you had actually thought of having that animation in the first place, right? How you implement them? Well, you don't really implement them, your developers do. They write codes, right? Something that we all designers are scared of, writing code. None of us want to write code, right? Uh, so to implement, you need to write code and code can look like this, right? It's complicated, it's scary. Uh, I'm an engineer, I've written my fair share of code, but still this kind of code makes me feel scared. By the way, do you know what code this is? This is not some random text which I have typed. You know what this is? This is nothing but this guy, this guy that you see. This entire animation has been converted into code and that code can be copied and pasted and implemented anywhere. You don't believe it? <laughs> well, let me show it. You know, this is what it is. So the code that you see, those, you know, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of lines of complicated code that you see, those were not written or typed on a text editor. They were automatically generated by Lottie. So in a way, we lottified the Squid Game card. Lotify, is that even a word? No, you know, say say boom in the comments if you feel that lotify, you like the word lotify, okay? I, I love the word, you know, I, I just made it up and I, I, I liked it, I liked it. So what happens is you see this, this uh, left side screen grab that you see, that's nothing but the preview of how this animation, which is directly made in After Effects, how that preview can look on lotifiles and on the right side, what you see is the lines of code that is automatically getting generated, which you can pass on to your developer so that they can implement it. Okay, now this is how simple it is. What you see right now in front of my screen is uh, is a screenshot of After Effects, right? That's where I had animated this this character. Then all that I had to do was uh, just uh, in, uh, install the plugin of Lottie Files. Of course, I already had it because I use it on a daily basis. And the moment you open, you will see all the components or rather all the uh, compositions which I had inside After Effects, like right? character, main composition, mobile UI, reel. These were the different compositions which I had made. You know, reel, of course, and I posted on Instagram reels. I made a mock UI as well, I was doing. So all that you need to do is just click on whichever composition you want to render as Lottie. In our case, it was the character one, that is the first one, because that's where I had animated. And then I was using that character composition inside every other composition to come up. I put a background, I put square, all this text, right? But this character was the main thing. This button, folks, this button, this green button, clicking this is the only thing that you need to know. I kid you not. <laughs> this is the only thing that you need to know. And when you do, it takes a few seconds. It generates this file called character.json or, or what the name of your composition is dot json which is the extension and this json file is nothing but a text file which has this code inside and the next step is very simple you all know you give this character.json file to your developer and they know how to do it they know how to do it it's just about placing it it's just about placing an image in a website or an app just that now the file is not a dot jpeg it's a dot json and it's not a still image it's a moving animation right so that's what lottie makes it extremely extremely easy and gives us developers a lot of control as to how an animation or gives us designers sorry a lot of control as to how an animation can be implemented in real life that's pretty much what i had for this short uh <laughs> live stream folks uh Thanks a lot, you know, I, I think we have some time and I would love to take some questions. Uh, Joe, if you're there, you know, it's all yours now. Thanks, Sutashi, for the amazing session. I hope everyone enjoyed it as much as I did. Okay, well, uh, while we wait for the questions to flow in, uh, so thought, like, maybe let's get to some questions that were submitted to us before the live stream. Sure. Right. So, there's one. For a beginner in A, is there another tool that you can recommend to create animations? Okay. Uh, well, uh, if you're a beginner in A, if you're a beginner in After Effects uh, or you're a beginner into motion design, uh, there aren't any other professionally accepted tools, right? But, but, hear me out. There are many other trade-offs that you can do. You know, you can find easier ways to create, like. I'm assuming you are a digital designer, digital UX designer, if you're attending this uh, uh, talk, 
I'm assuming there's a good probability. If you are, then you can try some of these animations in Figma as well. In Figma as well. And uh, you can try some of these things, wait for it, if you use a Mac, on Keynote. You see this presentation that I presented today? This was made in Keynote. Keynote is a PowerPoint equivalent in Apple ecosystem. So Keynote has this feature called uh, Magic Move. Magic move is nothing but you define the initial stage and you define the final stage and everything else kind of, you know, gets taken care of. In at the beginning, you remember I said how and when, when, how was coming from the top and when came from the bottom. I don't know if some of you have wondered how that was made. That was made directly in Keynote. What I did was the initial stage, I put how at the top beyond the frame and when at the bottom beyond the frame. And then the next one, I put them at the center. And then when I played the slide, it comes from top, it comes from bottom and it forms the animation, right? So this is actually the fundamental which is used in every animation tool, including After Effects, right? Just that, you know, you don't define the initial and the final stages as easily as uh, you do in Keynote, but you add keyframes where you define the initial stage, you add another keyframe, you define the final stage and the tool kind of takes care of the animation, right? So if you are really curious, but you don't want to dabble with After Effects here, try Keynote, try Figma. Figma also has a similar thing. I just forgot the name. Even it has called option called smart animate. So smart animate also does the same thing. You define the initial stage, you define the final stage and the animation in between is taken care by Figma. So you can start with that. But if you're really interested, I suggest, you know, it's good time to dabble with After Effects. Like I said, you just need to know two out of 10, two out of 10. That's barely 5% of After Effects. Watch a few tutorials and then you'll find it really easy. Thanks, Sapta. Um, so I think we have some questions coming in already. Let me just look at one. So there's a question from YouTube. Um, so the step is to have the Lolly plugin installed into AE and then export it, right? Yes, Noble. Yes. Uh, the, the process is uh, very simple. As is as much as exporting a video. When you create an animation after effects, you export it as a video, right? That's the most obvious thing that all of us do. Whatever step you do, you go to export, export, go to media encoder or something, you do it, right? And then you click on a button, it renders. It's same out here, just that you don't go to export, you go to plugins, lot of files, and then you click on that green button that I showed you, that'll export it. But having said that, you know, it's it's not as rosy as it, I maybe I made it sound because Lottie also has its limitations because not every thing that you can do in After Effects can be converted into a Lottie. You, know, you can't have a, say a video and expect it to get converted into Lottie, well, there are some workarounds using which you can make by converting into a PNG sequence and all, but uh, there are some limitations. So, you know, you can check out the website of uh, Lottie where they have written, you know, what is supported, what is not supported. The effects panel of After Effects, those effects are not supported, right? So everything else, the basic ones, moving, shaking, you know, trim path, all these things are supported. All right, we actually have a lot of questions, but I'm just gonna pick a few. I think this is a short one. Can we use it with XD? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so you can create Lotties with XD. Uh, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, you, can, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you can use uh, l you can use Lotties in XD in your XD prototypes in your Figma prototypes as well. So Lottie uh, has a lot of free animation. So install the Lottie pl Lottie plugin for Figma as well as for XD, whichever tool you use. In your case, probably it's XD. And there you can browse many free animations which are provided by the community. So you can always use those Lottie animations in your prototypes, right? So you can't create Lottie from XD, but you can use Lottie in your Figma uh, or in your XD prototypes. I'm so used to Figma, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is an interesting one. How can we combine two Lotties and make one? Oh, wow, that is interesting, no? I never tried that. I never tried that by combining two Lotties uh, to make one Lottie. I, I think I know the reason why I didn't try it because uh, since I'm a creator, um, I if I want two Lotties together, maybe I created that and then I export it as a single Lottie. Uh, but, well, honestly, I don't know the answer of it, but I know for a fact that once you make it into a Lottie, you cannot open it in After Effects again. But Lottie Files has a Lottie editor. So, you know, you can open an existing Lottie in the web interface of LottieFiles.com where you can make minor edits to it. You know, maybe you can change color or duration, speed and all. Uh, that is possible without the tool. 
I mean, I know that doesn't completely answer your question, but uh, let me try and get back to you, Mukund. Um, maybe we'll get hold of your email ID and we'll find out more and tell you if there is any way you can combine two existing lotties to make a single one. Yeah, and for folks tuning in, if you know the answer, do share them on the live chat with us as well. Oh, yes. We can't oh, yes. get to I will, it. I will yeah. also know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. we all learn something as well. We can't get to sure. every question. So I think let's uh, do one more. Sorry, folks, I have to go according to order, <laughs> just to be fair to everyone. All right. Hi, Sapta. Can Lotti be used to export an animation done with a raster asset or just vector? Okay, so Lottie inherently is a vector thing. So which means uh, if you use if you use every vector asset inside Lottie, then you will have an animation that will have vector properties, which means you can scale it up to infinite times without any losing, loss in quality, right? You will still have the same sharp animation if you use all vector assets. But having said that, you can also use raster elements, right? You can use raster elements, images, etc., put it inside After Effects and export it as Lottie. But here's what it'll happen. So you can ex still export it, but it won't have vector capability. Do not expect to scale it uh, and still have perfect quality because at the end you're using images. So then what happens is you saw the breakdown that I showed of the of that character that I had made. Those are different images. So what you'll have is one Lottie file and all these images are embedded in that Lottie file. So those images are, you know, uh, you know, uh, uploaded somewhere in the cloud and they're all embedded in that lines of code. So it is still connecting to the same JPEGs or PNGs that you had worked with, uh, but it won't have the vector properties. Short answer, yes, you can do it with uh, raster uh, properties as well, but then you will not have vector capability in the final Lottie. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, um, I think that all the time that we have today but i know more questions are still coming in let you know the team and subtitles work together on how to populate all these questions and we really want to answer them uh, even after this live stream so i think thanks so much again Sapashi, for all the insights i'll be moving you to the backstage to wrap up the live stream for today thank you so much yeah, thank you, Joe. It was it was nice being here. And for everyone whose question wasn't answered, I would suggest, you know, you go drop it as a comment because this live stream video will be present as a video in our respective channels, in my channel as well as in the channel of Lottie Files. So please drop your questions there. Uh, we will try and get back an answer if your question was not answered during the live stream. All right. Thanks so much, Satashi. Thank you once again, everyone, for tuning in. We hope you had a great time and learned a lot from the session. If you'd like to rewatch this live stream, you can find the recording on Lodifile's social channel. The team has a lot more live stream coming your way, so do subscribe and follow us to stay updated. Lastly, we'd also love to hear your feedback about this live stream. And we'll be selecting a few lucky winners from the submission to receive some super cool Lodifile swags. So don't forget to include your email address in the feedback form to stand a chance to win. And if you're interested to be part of our Lodi community initiative to host awesome live stream like today's, or be a speaker at one, you can also state your interest in the feedback form. With that said, thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye folks. Thank you.